What's up, everybody? I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I miss you guys. There is a lot that needs to be talked about, so let's go. So it is in it's November, and November is basically the National Native American Heritage Month. And with this month, we are uh, paying tribute to the rich ancestry and traditions of the Native Americans. Now, on Monday, Trump, he held a White House event honoring the Cold Talkers. So if you guys don't know who the Cold Talkers are, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But the Cold Talkers have been honored by many American politicians in the last two decades, mostly notable with the presentation of the Congressional uh, Gold Member medals to the surviving soldiers and their families by members of the U.S. Congress in 2013. Now, the Cold Talkers during uh, World War II, uh, the Marine Corps used one of the thousands of languages spoken in the world to create an unbreakable code, Navajo. And this actually wasn't the first time they actually used a Native American language, which was used to break a code. Now, during World War I, the Choctaw uh, language was used in a transmission of secret tactical messages. It was also an instrumental in a successful surprise attack against the Germans. Now, going back to 2017, uh, you know, I was talking about the Cold Talkers being honored and everything. Uh, President Bush, he honored the Cold Talkers in tw uh, 2001. Obama, he actually, uh, he greeted several of the the na tribal native uh, tribes in 2012 and after his speech to the Tribal Nations Conference. And you might think, you know, with Trump, you know, he, he may have it being a good, you know, good day and everything along the way. But he didn't, you know, it was just so horrible. Like I always tell you guys, when I talk about him, it's just like, just a big old crash right there. And there are so many reasons as to why. Well, he disrespected the very veterans he was supposed to be honoring in the Oval Office. And he reduced the, over like the 500 tribes in the U.S. to, uh, caricature and during this do you not during this you know uh after his inauguration he hung up a portrait of the architect of the indian removal act andrew jackson in his office i'm just i'm just take give you like a few seconds yeah so he put andrew jackson up in his office and if you guys don't know about andrew jackson his legislative uh resulted in a removal of thousands of native pe uh, american people from their homelands including the removal of the cherokee now, this event was called the Trail of Tears, history lesson, kids, uh, and it resulted in 17,000 people being forcibly re uh, removed from their uh, their homes and more than 5,000 dead. Now, the portrait of the architect of this, this, this period, you know, was hung right there in his office when he had the Native Americans at this event. And you just go, that, that couldn't be all, is it? Well, <laughs> let me tell you something watch this video and check it out and i just want to thank you because you're very very special people you were here long before any of us were here although we have a representative in congress who they say was here a long time ago they call her pocahontas but you know what i like you because you are special you are special people you are really incredible people and I have to, from the heart, from the absolute heart, we appreciate what you've done. So, yeah, that shows how stupid you can be. Now, if you guys are trying to think, like, who is he talking about this Pocahontas? He's talking about Elizabeth Warren. So, if you guys know about Elizabeth Warren, she's actually in the Congress. She's done so much. She's fought for a lot of us. And she's she's great. And she's been She's been there for a while, and, you know, for him to say that, that's just so undeniably racist. And you guys, I tell y'all so much to open your eyes, but some of y'all, y'all listen, it goes in one ear and comes out the other, okay? But, yeah, if you are honoring someone in their month, like the Na uh, Native American Heritage Month, Black History Month, Asian Month, you know, that kind of thing, honor them and don't fuck it up, okay? I'm just saying, you know, please don't screw up. Certain things that people have fought for for many, many years. Okay, um, it's just it gets to me. You know, it gets to me a lot when I hear this kind of thing, and people are being disrespectful to others, and it's just uh unbearing. You know. Second thing I want to talk about is congratulations to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle uh, on their engagement. So the royal wedding it will take place uh, next year at the St George Chapel in Windsor Castle, according to the Kingston Police. Uh, now, even though 
Megan, she doesn't come from her family or Rose too. That does not stop true love, you know, because Harry isn't the only person to choose someone outside of uh, West Westminster Abbey. You know, Prince Charles, he married Princess Diana. May she rest in peace. And, you know, so much, you know, love is in the air, people. If you love someone, let that person know. And that is what Prince Harry did with Meghan Markle. Now, if you ever watch Shoots on USA Network, you guys know she is an amazing actress on there. She plays Rachel Zane, and I love her on that show, y'all. She is a badass. And she, you know, she comes from, like, a very, you know, cultured and, like, the show business uh, area because her dad was a, a cinematographer for the 80s show Married with Children. If you have not watched it, you guys got to watch it. There are some hilarious shows on there and everything along the way. And she had her first television appearance on uh, CSI. Oh, no, not CSI. She actually had it on General Hospital in 2002 before moving on to Rose and CSI without a trace, Castle. And then she got onto Suits, and oh my God, it's just mind blowing. Now, along with that, Megan, she is actually she's an advocate. She, you know, she's always out there fighting for equality. She's also fighting for women's rights and everything so much along the way. Uh, she was actually the editor in chief of her own lifestyle website and brand called The Tig for three years. And she closed it this year in, you know, uh, April 2017 because, you know, whole her and Prince Harry going on. But I'm excited to see this. You know, I hope they broadcast the wedding. I would love to watch it. If I got the chance to go to this wedding, y'all, that would be the best. But I do want to congratulate to both Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. If you guys are watching this video, kudos to you guys. And I love you guys. Next thing I want to talk to you guys about is, you know, we have all these sexual harassment cases going on. You know, it started off with Weinstein. You also have, uh, let's see, you have Ben Affleck. You've got Matt Lauer. you got, wait, well, Matt Lauer. Yeah, Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer is accused of sexual harassment. That's why you don't see him on a Today Show anymore. Why? Well, because the cause of his dismissal, according to sources, was that a detailed complaint from another uh, current NBC employee about inappropriate sexual uh, conduct from Lauer. It stated, and it started at a trip at the Sochi Olympics in 2014, and it occurred for several months. Now, the employee met up with NBC Human Resources on Monday, and in a statement, uh, NBC News Chairman Andy Lack said that this was the first complaint about his behavior in over 20 years, and acknowledged that it may not be the last. You know, he said, we are. We were also present, uh, presented with reason to believe that this may not have been an isolated incident, and it probably wasn't because apparently other women are coming out and saying that hey, Matt Lauer, he did this to me, blah blah blah, that kind of thing. And despite being married, Lauer was fixated on women, especially with their bodies and their looks, according to more than ten accounts from former, current, and uh, former employees. He was also known for making lewd comments. Verbally and over text messages, he made a suggested reference to a colleague's uh, performance in bed and compared it to what she was able to do on her job, according to witnesses for the exchange. And for Lauer, apparently work and sex were intertwined. Now, he was fired on Wednesday and, you know, he he basically said had a statement talking about, you know, addressing this, the allegations uh, that he was harassed that he had harassed and assaulted women during his tenure at NBC, and he apologized for it and everything. I'm going to post the, the video link down below. But there, are, he said that there are no words to express my sorrow and regrets to the pain that I've caused uh, to others by words and actions. To the people I've hurt, I am truly sorry. As I am writing this, I have realized the depth of the damage and disappointment I have left behind at NBC. And there's more to it. You guys should watch it out. But yeah, Matt Lauer? Damn, man, come on, people, we, why? Do y'all really think that trying to trying to do all these sexual harassments is going to get you far? No. Hell no. Y'all need to say something, okay? Because if, you know, all these, all this, it's just like mind-blowing. You know, you got all these people getting fired and yet Donald Trump is still in office. I'm just saying. Think about that, people. You got all these people. All of these people are fired. But Donald Trump is still in office as the president. 
Think about that, y'all. Really think about that, okay? Finally, I want to talk to you guys about net neutrality. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, well, basically, let me ask you guys this. When you go online, you have expectations. You expect to go on whatever website you want to go to. You expect that your phone or cable company isn't messing up with your data or anything else like that. And you're able to go onto your like application and everything on the way. Basically, you have control of your whole internet experience. Now, net reality is basically the principle that internet providers like Comcast and Verizon should not control what we see and do online. And in 2015, uh, startups, internet freedom groups, and 3.7 million commuter, uh, commenters, uh, commenters sorry, uh, won strong net uh, neutrality uh, rules from the FCC. Uh, basically saying that uh, internet provides for, uh, the internet provides from blocking, throttling, and paid privatizing. Fast lanes basically saying like, you know, so that's that pay and slow lanes for everyone else basically. So like, kind of weird in, in some way. Now nearly everyone who understands this and depends on the internet supports this uh, and whether they're like startup founders, activists, gamers, po uh, politicians, uh, investors, comedians, YouTube stars like Daystorm, Swoozy, the Gabby Show, what uh, was good? Uh, let's see, myself, you know that that kind of thing, or typical internet users who just want the internet to be to be used as work as advertised, regardless of the politi uh, political party. But don't take my word for it. Ask around and watch some of the videos to actually talk about it. And if the FCC takes this away from us, well, we're gonna be paying for visits on Facebook like we pay for Netflix, and that's gonna be kind of ridiculous because you know. People got like loans, they got uh, car notes and everything on the way, and it's just going to be too much to deal with this kind of thing, you know? And we'll be paying for a lot of things, you know? It's like, you don't want to go on YouTube saying, oh, I want to watch this YouTube video. They're going to be like, oh, you want to watch this video? It's going to be like $5. No, no, don't know. And it's going, and the videos will be slow because the IPS can control whatever they want to. Now, if you guys have a voice, and I know you guys have a voice, let that voice be heard because the FCC will vote on this on December 14th uh, to destroy this uh, this for all of us. You know, let your voice be heard. Tell them, hey, we do not want this happening to us. You know, just let us be us. You know, let us go on the internet and have fun along the way. Okay? And with that being said, I want you guys to tell me, what is on your mind? Tell me what you guys think about the whole net neurality thing. Matt Lauer, Prince Harry, Meghan Markel. Also, tell me about the whole Native American Pocahontas thing that Trump said. It's just oh, so much. But like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what is on your mind, people. Like I always say, I am always here for you guys, okay? I love you guys no matter what. And with that being said, peace out.